love you, Lord. Jesus. We give you glory, Father. Glory. We give you praise, Lord. You're a mighty God. You are more than enough. We magnify you, Lord. We glorify you, Father. Oh, Rabba, Kiyando, Lord, Rabando, Raboso, Rabosi. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise, Father. Be big in this house, Father. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you are worthy, Lord. You're a mighty God. You are more than enough. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Father, I pray you open our eyes so we can see in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Open our ears so we can hear, Father. Lead us, guide us by your Spirit. Be big in our lives, I pray. Help us, Lord, to grow in grace. Grow every day, Father, in faith, Father. We magnify you, Lord. We glorify you. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jude says we build up ourselves in the most holy faith as we pray in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost is praying in tongues. Yes. We pray in the Spirit. We pray in tongues. Paul, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he said, when we pray in tongues, our understanding is unfruitful, for our spirit prayeth. Yes. Say our spirit prayeth. Our spirit prayeth. So if I'm praying in the Spirit, I'm praying in tongues. Yes. Thank now I don't understand what I'm saying. Glory to you, Lord. But God does. Yes, he does. Except for we're speaking to God mysteries, so God understands what we say. Amen. Even though it's a mystery to us, those around us, it's not a mystery to God. Paul said in Romans chapter, I mean, no, Romans and 1 Corinthians chapter 13, says, Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not love, I may become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. So when we speak in tongues, it's to God. Amen. And sometimes when we're speaking in tongues, it's tongues of angels. It's a heavenly language. So no man understandeth us. Now in Acts chapter 2, when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance, there were there among them people from all nations because it was the festival of Pentecost. And so there were people all around. There was thousands of people in that place. And they heard them. And the Bible says a supernatural thing happened, that they all heard them speak in their own languages. But the Bible doesn't say they were speaking in their own language. They just heard them speak in their own languages. They were speaking in tongues, yes. which no man understands. But God supernaturally caused them to be able to hear them speak in their own language. That was a miracle. Amen. That was a miracle. Glory. Hallelujah. One to stand there said, they're speaking in, in Greek. And I said, no, they're speaking in Italian. <laughs> no, they were, they were just speaking in tongues. But they, God caused them to hear them speak. And they were under such wonder. Then Peter got to preach to them a message that several thousand got saved that day. Yes. Amen. Wow. This yes. is what do we need to do to be saved. I love to hear that from somebody. Amen. What do I need to do to be saved? Thank you, Lord. I've yes. had people walk up. Like when I was in the Army, I was a chaplain's assistant in the Army, and uh, one of the guards in the prison, I worked in the prison for a year and a half, and one of the guards came into my office one day after about six months I was in there, and he pointed his finger at me and he said, I've been watching you. I thought, oh no. <laughs> He's been watching. This is a policeman, you know. I've been watching you. I said, okay. You know, I didn't know what to do. I said, okay. He said, I've been watching your life. He said, I want to I want to get saved. Can you lead me to the Lord? Hallelujah. I got to lead him to the Lord. He went home and he led his whole family to the Lord. Yes. Before I got out of the army, they got back with me and they said, we just want to tell you what's happened. They said, we were working in our home in a local church here. And we are love God. Our whole family is living for God. They said they just wanted to thank me. Well, I just want to thank God. Yes. You see, people do watch you when you, you proclaim to be a Christian. Yes. Amen. They will watch you. The world will watch you. That's why it's important to live for God. Amen. Turn me to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. 
Thank you, Father. And this is not my message yet. So I'm just warning you. So i got plenty to go. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you, Lord. Glory to God. Now, that's the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Rome. Now, when the, these epistles, they were all written to the church, folks. I heard one minister say, oh, we've got to rightly divide the word of truth. And that means we've got to decide if these are written to Christians or if these are written to sinners. The scriptures were not written to sinners. They were written to Christians. Amen. They were written to Christians. Amen. The New Covenant epistles, they were all written to Christians. That's why it says, to the church that's in Rome, to the church that's in Corinth. They're written to Christians. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Thank you, Lord. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. brethren say brethren. brethren. Christians. Amen. By the mercies of God... That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, say holy, holy, and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, why is our reasonable service to do that? To present our bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy, living holy. Why is that reasonable? Because Jesus paid the price. Yes. He died. He laid it all down for you. Jesus said, greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for a friend. And he said, and you are my friend if you do whatever I say, if you keep my commandments. You see, as long as we walk in the ways of Jesus, then, then we're in right standing with God. Amen. Then we're right with God. That's called righteousness. First John says, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous, but he that sinneth is of the devil, for the devil sent from the beginning. But for this purpose was the Son of Man manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. You see, the reason Jesus came was to destroy all the works of the devil. Amen. Sin is the number one work of the devil. The devil's trying to get you to disobey God every chance he gets. Why? Because that will separate you from God. Mm -hmm. If you choose to do that, knowing, if you knowingly choose to... Now, I, I, I thought about cheating on my wife. I mean, that thought came to my head, but it wasn't my thought. It was the devil's thought, but I recognized that. But I could have chose to not do that. I could have chose to not be faithful to my wife. But I made a promise to my wife to be faithful to my wife. And so for the rest of my, for all my life, I will always be faithful to my wife because I made that commitment to her. I'm in covenant with her. Now, if I cheated on her, she would have a full right to throw me out. And I would deserve it. When we come to God, we come into covenant with God. It's like a marriage. Yes. God likens it to like, like a marriage yes, he covenant. Does. He does. And see, we have to be faithful to God. If we disobey God, we break covenant with God. Now, God says if we break covenant with Him... now. He will never, ever leave you nor forsake you as long as you're living for Him. Amen. As long as you're walking with God. Right. He will never, ever leave you or forsake you. But it says in the Bible, but it says, but if we forsake Him, He will forsake us. That's true. You see, it's not God walking away from us, it's us walking away from God. Yeah. So we, we, we must, we don't have to, you can die and go to hell if you want to. I mean, God made us free. Yes, we're free to go to heaven or hell. I want to go to heaven. Amen. I'm going to obey God. Yes. I'm just here for a little while. Amen. I'm just here for a little while. Life is short. Yes. Right. James says life is like a vapor. It's here just for a little while and then it's gone. That's right. It's like some translations say like a puff of smoke. You know how a puff of smoke goes up and then just dissipates. It just dissipates. You ever watch the cloud? Sometimes they just dissipate. Hallelujah. So here it says we should. Now the reason we should is because the Bible says without holiness, no man will see the Lord. That's true. If you look up that no man, it means none. Mm -hmm. No, not one. You cannot make it to heaven without, without living a holy life. Now, you can't live a holy life on your own. That's 
That's true. Jesus said this, these words. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You know what nothing means? No, no thing. There's no thing you can do without Jesus. You cannot live for God without Jesus. You cannot be free without Jesus. Jesus was preaching one time, and these Jewish people that he was preaching to, the Bible says many of these Jewish people believed in Jesus. What do we call people who believe in Jesus? Believe. We call that believers, right? Yeah. And then he said these words. He said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And when he told them that, you see, they already thought they were free because they were the descendants of Abraham. They were his descendants. So how can, how can we have to be follow your words to be free? We're Abraham's descendants. And Jesus said this, whoever commits sin is the slave of sin. Whoever commits sin is a slave. Now, Paul said the exact same thing. Paul said in Romans chapter 6, he said, Whoever you yield your members to obey, that's whose slave you become. That is true. Amen. Whether obedience unto eternal life or whether rebellion unto, unto the flesh and unto death. We can get to choose to walk after the Spirit or after the flesh. Walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. Amen. If we walk after the flesh, we will die. But if we through the Spirit will mortify or put to death the deeds of the body, then we'll live. Amen. That's a choice we have every day, folks. Every day. 